Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to try and answer the question what if a thousand for us Rakoses were transported back into the Carboniferous period. But before that, let me clarify, that due to the paradoxal natures of that hypothetical scenario, we're going to assume that they were not only transported back in time hundreds of millions of years ago, but that they were also transported into another universe, so our current one doesn't get affected. Also, for this specific scenario, we're going to choose a specific species of the Ferus Racidae family, since it's not just a single species. That'd be Kalenkin. Firstly, we need to even know what we're talking about, so I'm going to present you information about both the specific terror bird species I chose, and the Carboniferous period as a whole. Kalenkin, along with the entire Ferus Racidae family of species, was a flightless predatory bird. It lived around 15 million years ago in what is now Argentina, during the Middle Miocene period. The bird is thought to have been roughly 3 meters in height and 100 kilograms in weight. Kalenkin, along with many other species of its family, basically had super strong legs and sharp claws, which helped them in hunting. They were the apex predators of South America during their reign, and are thought to have hunted in vast, open areas, rather than forests Kalenkin was also likely capable of running moderately fast, up to around 48 kilometers per hour, which is around 30 miles an hour. On the other hand, the Carboniferous period started roughly 360 million years ago, and continuing until around 61 million years later, ending around 299 million years ago. Unlike today, the oxygen levels in the atmosphere were about 35%, compared to the mere 21% they are today. That is because of the many plant species occurring in this period, which coincidentally also gave its name. Due to the high concentration of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, land arthropods were able to grow to unbelievable sizes. Such are the Meganeura and the Arthropleura, which are like giants in comparison to their modern relatives. Examples of animals which lived in the Carboniferous period are the not only the previously mentioned arthropods Meganeura and Arthropleura, but also Pulmonoscorpius and the Trigonotarbid species, along with land vertebrates, such as primal amphibians, Hylonomus, early synapsids, etc. The two main things that the 1000 individs would spot, are the temperature and oxygen level differences. Back in their natural habitat, the Kalenkins were used to an average temperature around 18.4 degrees Celsius, but now, they were transported to an environment with 6 whole degrees below that number, during the middle Carboniferous period. But this is not much of a difference, compared to the oxygen levels. Back in the Miocene period, the average oxygen levels were about 18% in the atmosphere, Meanwhile now, they would have to deal with 35%. This is such an enormous difference, that some, if not many of the terror birds would not be able to take it, and perish from oxygen intoxication. The effects of inhaling 17% more oxygen than you're used to include oxygen narcosis which affects your cognitive abilities and respiratory issues, but might also provide some benefits, such as improved oxygenation and increased alertness. So let's say that within the first week, around 30 to 50 Kalenkins would die of these reasons alone. But now, with these birds taken away from their natural environment, would have to adapt to their circumstances, which also includes hunting. Because of their size, the Kalenkins would have no natural predators, though their young would sometimes become a snack for some predators. Assuming the terror birds were dropped on a randomly chosen land mass, their new diets could include animals such as the famous Arthropleura, Proterogyrinus, and Pulmonoscorpius, along with the lesser known Crassogyrinus and Platyhistrix. Animals such as Ianthosaurus and Meganeura would hardly pose as any food interests to Ferus Rakos either due to their size or agility, and beasts such as Rhizotus would also probably not pose as food interest to the terror birds, because of qualities such as sheer size and power or simply because they too wouldn't come across with them much due to their new habitual differences. Ultimately, the Kalenkins would have to change their food habits, due to the lack of the mammals and reptiles of their time, but they wouldn't have much competition. 
If they manage to survive long enough to create offspring, the birds might face some challenges. Not only would the temporal and atmospheric differences impact the embryonic development in the eggs, but predators such as the previously mentioned Proterogyrinus and Pulmonoscorpius, along with different trigonotarbid species might make it even more difficult for the eventual growth of the embryos to fully grown individuals to function the same. However, if it were not for the other environmental differences, these predators would have only been a substitute for the ones that have existed in the Kalenkin's natural environment. But since that would not be the case, I propose that it would be more difficult for the babies to fully grow up and reproduce. But if they do in fact, survive multiple generations of these vastly different circumstances, the Kalenkins would likely adapt, eventually evolving lungs that are more sufficient for this kind of atmosphere, as well as other minor bodily adaptations. There is absolutely no way to say for sure, but I will try to guess different adapt ions and eventual main differences between species of Kalenkin that would occur. One of them I propose, is that a Kalenkin subspecies would adapt for a semi-aquatic lifestyle, which would first of all start by only adapting and evolving specific traits, that would improve hunting in the water. If I had to guess, that would be the case, as for a specific population or multiple populations, that would incorporate fish and other marine life into their diet. That would at first start with an adaption of the feet, turning them into webbed feet, just like what birds like ducks and swans possess today. However, due to the nature of the ferus racco's feet in themselves, I would also guess that this adaption would not come by as quickly as we'd expect. Furthermore, their legs as a whole would probably evolve to be somewhat shorter, so the bird has the ability to swim better, easier and faster. If they are so pressured for long enough, the semi-aquatic Kalenkin's feet could even evolve into downward fins, just as what happened to the front limbs of the ancestor of the dolphins and other aquatic mammals, Ambulocetus. As for the rest of the Kalenkins that are still on land, I also have a few guesses to make. First of all, even though being of a smaller size might be beneficial to an organism due to it lacking less food to sustain itself, I don't think Kalenkin populations would need to adapt to such smaller sizes. Because of their size when they were transported into an entirely different environment, they were safe from most, if not all of the other predators of the Carboniferous period, so I don't see why they would need to put themselves at such a huge risk. Another thing in an aftermath of their unique size to that period is, that since they wouldn't deal with much competition with other kinds of animals, they would probably also diversify faster and at a larger rates than the others. I also think, that some subspecies would evolve to grow feathers, similar to the coloration of their environment. That adaptation would allow for a more effective hunt, since they'd be harder to spot. However, one thing I forgot to mention, is one way for a population of Kalenkins to evolve smaller, because of their physical superiority, and the fact that the terror birds would be the apex predators in their new, each respective ecosystems, that might lead to a minor or even mild extinction event. And during it and after that, because of the lack of proper nutrients, some Kalenkin might adapt to smaller sizes, so they would need less energy. Without this mild extinction event, the terror birds would continue to grow and evolve even larger, which would be their death sentence in the Permian extinction, otherwise known as the Great Dying. But if such an extinction was to occur, that would allow for some populations of birds to evolve smaller, potentially sparing them in the Permio-Triassic extinction event. But hey, that's just a speculation. Thanks for watching.